Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to interview the renowned radio personality and just renowned person, and best of all, my capital brother, Bernie Hayes. How you doing, Bernie? I'm doing fine, Frank. Thank you for inviting me. That's good. That's great. Uh, Bernie's going to share with us his life, and his legacy, and maybe answer a few questions, and maybe pose a few questions. So with that, Bernie, uh, I'm just going to turn everything over to you and just fire away. Well, thank you. I, uh, I don't know what to say, Frank. I'm just so honored to be here with you and, and in, in the Cap House. And uh, there's so much to tell about. I'll be 89 years old, September 16th. Oh. 89. Wow. Yeah, September 16th. Now that's a blessing. Yes, it is. Welcome to the 80s club. Thank you. <laughs> very, very nice to be here, too, an octogenarian. <laughs> yeah. But uh, from, I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and a uh, graduate of the University of Illinois with a degree in journalism. But also, I was in the Air Force at the same time I was in school and a thing called USAFI, where I could study mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, while I was actually on active duty. And after that, I went to a... Uh, well, what branch were you in? Air Force, yes, sir. Air Force? Mm -hmm. You were a pilot or...? No, 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 I was a radar operator. A who? Ra radar operator. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and plus, I was in did the radio okay. and the service also. So what wars did you were you in? Korea. Oh man, oh, yeah. that was a rough one. <laughs> it was. Yeah. They called it a, action, but it was it was a yeah. war. Yeah, but luckily I was stationed in Alaska. I only hit New York once for about a week. Okay. And uh, then, but mostly in Alaska. Then I was lucky enough to be transferred when I rotated back to O'Hare International Airport. Okay. Which at that time was O'Hare Air Force Base. Okay. Four eighty second Fighter Interceptor Squadron. So uh, I was at home at the time and still in service also. How, how many years were you in the service? Almost four. Four years? Almost, yeah. Okay. Not quite four. Yeah. But it, it, I mean, was, you volunteered or they? Well, I did because uh, during the Korean conflict, they were drafting folks. You know, and I was still in school, but it didn't make, make a difference. But uh, I volunteered to go to the Air Force. That's where I had my choice mm -hmm. instead of their choice. I didn't want to, certainly didn't want to be in the infantry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that, that was just selfish of me. But uh, Air Force, it was good. I learned, I was able to do broadcasting in there too, so that was wonderful. So that's where you got your initial training. Precisely. Wow. Yeah, but uh, so it paid off for you. Very much so, yeah. Okay. Very, very, very kind, yeah. So, so after you got out of the, the Air Force? I, I got a job in Alexandria, Louisiana in 1956, KBDS. In Alexandria, Louisiana. Because you're from Chicago. I'm from Chicago. but You uh, went all the way down to Louisiana. Yeah. That's first, that's something first something else there. must have been down there in Louisiana. Well, no, not really. <laughs> that's the only place they would hire me at the time, you know. Because oh, I see. It was a, it's still a tight market. But at that time, they were looking for disc jockeys. And uh, I was a disc jockey. And they asked me to come to Alexandria, Louisiana, Rapides Parish, in 1956. And wow. That's where I went. And I stayed there until 58 and then went back to Chicago. WSBC and WDC, and uh, stayed there until 1964. I moved to San Francisco, KSOL. So you were going where the job opportunities were. Precisely, yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah, because I was my, that was my my passion, radio and communications, and okay. so I was there until 64. Then 19 April 22nd, 1965, I came to St. Louis. Right, but now at that time, opportunities for black. DJs, I mean, were they limited? Very limited. They were very limited. Yeah, sure. And uh, the pay was terrible. You know, <laughs> we were treated like we were stepchildren. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But uh, they had certain stations, as they did here in St. Louis, uh, went uh, program to the black community. Okay. Now, so, now, the station I remember here in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. Let's see. WSL and KATZ. Right. Mm -hmm. so, I was on both of them. You were at both? Yeah, at one time. Yeah. So bring me up to date. What has happened to them? Well, I came here in 1965 from San Francisco to KTZ. And I was there until 1967. I left there and went to KXLW in 1967. 1969 with the KWK. Scoop Sanders and I opened the station up. Uh, it had been closed for a few years because of the pony contest they had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in 1969 to 1972, we were at KWK. Then I went to Channel 2 
Oh, yeah, KTVI. You moving on up? Oh yeah, what was, I was doing. I mean, weather. when you went to Channel Two, yeah. what year was that? Nineteen seventy-two. So when it started to integrate, oh, uh, more or less, um, you know. I mean, you uh, didn't have to hide behind the curtain. They no, let no, you come no, out no. Front. Oh, oh yeah. Sco I follow Scoop Sanders. Scoop Sanders was a program director, and dear friend of mine. I was Godfather of Children at KXLW, and Scoop was a. Uh, Went to Channel 2 and I was still at KWK. Then, when he got ready to leave to go to Baltimore, they asked me to come to Channel 2 to take his place. Oh. And so I did that. So I was the staff announcer and also did the weather and dialing for dollars at Channel 2. I remember dialing for dollars. Yeah, I was host I, I never got any of them, but I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that was right. That was right. And that, uh, so we, that okay. was so then. I, now, your resume says that you were print and broadcast journalist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, how is that different than being a DJ? Well, if I was a broadcast journalist, they wouldn't let me act as a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't, they wouldn't hire, you know, broadcasting. They weren't hiring journalists at that time. You know, I, I tried the Chicago Tribune. I worked there briefly. But the other newspapers, they just wouldn't hire black people. Hmm. But uh, they'd hire us as disc jockeys to entertain you, but they wouldn't hire us to inform you. That was the way it was. So the print part was what? Newspaper. I, I, oh. I, I worked for the Bulletin newspaper for a while. And I was at the Singles American newspaper here for 27 years. You know, speaking of newspapers, you know, East St. Louis does not have a, a newspaper now. I used to work, read the Monitor Weekly every week. Yeah, we, we've lost the, lost the Monitor. The Monitor is back up. I've just been told by a technician that the Monitor is revised. It's online. How, how? I mean, do you know how that came about? It's new and I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Because what I read it was uh, they ran into some financial difficulties. Yes, they, they closed down. Yeah. They, somehow they, opened they had a benefactor. Yeah. I need to get to know their benefactor. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, I know they were That's good online, news, though, because, because one of my questions is going to be how can a community survive mm -hmm. without a newspaper? Yeah. Now, you know, ideally, you want, you want a daily newspaper, Certainly. but when you lose the weekly, <laughs> you lost everything. You have to call the phone home to find out if a relative died. Like, I mean, other than that, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't know. But that's good news, and I hope they can sustain it. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, you know, so I, I was an avid reader of the St. Louis Monitor. Yeah, the St. Louis Monitor. Yeah, I used to look at it to, to see if I was in the obituary. Yeah. <laughs> so far, I haven't been in it. But and Clyde Jordan, I were very yeah. good also. Oh, yeah, I knew Clyde. Clyde, he was yeah. in something else, yeah. Okay, so now you went from print and broadcast journalist. I see where radio and television. When did you get on TV? Well, Channel 2, 1972. Channel 2. Yeah, and then uh, also at the same time, we had the Black Circle Hour TV show. Okay. And the Soul Brotherhood, Jim Gates and I did the show. Oh, the show. brown eyed Scorpio. Brown -eyed Scorpio yeah. Is he still alive? Very much so. Oh, that's interesting. Moving slow, but he's moving still, slow. Yeah, he's still around. Yeah, I've been right. asked about him several times. I was with him last week. It's very, very good. Oh, that's good. He's that's having good. a problem walking. He had a little accident at his knees and hip, uh, a swollen. But yeah, but he's good. But you know, he's when alive. you get our age, you can't fall. Treat slice. If you fall, <laughs> getting up is the problem. <laughs> like I said, I can get down, but don't ask yeah. me to get up. Yeah. Is that sudden stop will hurt you? Yeah, <laughs> and now that's true. So, uh, uh, Channel Two, where you, uh, uh, what did you announce? Where you had a program, you had a show. I was announcer, and uh, Dollar for Dollars host, host of Dollar for Dollars, and oh, Dollar for Dollars, yes, right, the ones I didn't get. Yeah, well, okay. we didn't get. <laughs> right, I hear you. Yeah. Now, now I'm looking on on, on the, your, your resume here. It says recording artist. Yeah. And producer. I didn't know you were a singer. Well, <laughs> yeah, I have a few records with Stax Records. Really? Uh, Four Brothers Records, Double Soul Records. Oh, I'm going to have to look that up. What, what was the name of the song? Well, the one is selling, still selling now from 1969 is Cool Strut. Cool uh, Strut. Yeah, cool Strut. Is that a jazz? No, it's a little, like a rap record, more or less. A talking record. You did a rap back then? Yeah, and and uh, Tribute to a Black Woman. All these records were big, big at one time. Wow. And uh, the cool show is still selling, calling on my buddies. That's uh, why I list all, most of the disc jockeys around the country at the time. That was 1967. In 1969, it was Cool Strut. In 72, it was Tribute to a Black Woman. 
Wow. They're, 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 they're still on, you can go to them on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to have to look those up. They're still Definitely going to look those up. Who struck? Were you playing an instrument? You no, 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 I'm just singing. All right, Bernie oh, Hayes, a vocalist. Train. I was on Soul Train. <laughs> what? You go, Bernie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Soul Train. That's right, Doc Neeson and I were very good friends. Oh, wow. You, you, you did all right. You did all right. Well, on the show, the Soul Train show, was also a friend of mine, Tyrone Davis was on there. B.B. King was on there. And the Staple Singers, we all did the same show together. Wow. Yeah. So you opened up for him, he opened up for you? Well, we just opened it. John had us in different segments, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, the group I was with, we did some opening at the Kill Auditorium. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Chuck Berry, we did one for Chuck Berry, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. I don't know how we got away with it, but... <laughs> I'm sure you were good. Yeah, but we did. But, but I remember all you guys doing. You, you all very professional. You well, very good, very good yeah. musicians and singers. That was the era of music back in the yes. '60s, mm -hmm. '70s. But something happened. You know, I know you can look back and reflect on Ike and Tina. I mean, I remember we, we Ike and Ike and Tina never gave East St. Louis much credit. Yeah, but they lived in East St. Louis on Virginia Place for years. Precisely. They used to play at the Manhattan Club mm -hmm. before they got famous. I heard their song, the first hit song you, that he wrote for called You're Just a Fool in Love. Fool in Love. That, that's, that's the first song I heard. Chuck Berry, it's, 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 it's strange about Chuck Berry. We used to go down to Cosmo to hear Chuck play. Chuck wanted to be a blues singer. Chuck Berry could not sing the blues. <laughs> Johnny Johnson, he was working with Johnny Johnson. Yeah, but he couldn't sing the blues. Mm -hmm. And so we would go, because at the end of each of the shows, he would play what we thought was country western. Because yeah. we never heard nothing like that before. Yeah, yeah. So we would it be square dancing and, and, you know, <laughs> turn your partner and, yeah, and all of that. Later we found out that the song was Maybelline. Mm -hmm. Became one of the biggest hits in the world. Country and western. we're laughing at the man. <laughs> well, same that happens sometimes. You know? Yeah, it's a new genre. <laughs> yeah, up a brand new, new, new door for you. Yeah, but yeah. Was that way. I used to go see Ike and Tina, not to see Tina, but to see the Ikeettes. Yeah, she was too young. Robbie Montgomery. I was too young too, but you know, well, that was Robbie Montgomery. And, yeah, uh, and, uh, and the one that has the uh, which is Sweetie Pies. Yeah, that's that's Robbie. That's Robbie. Yeah, that's Sweetie Pie. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the the other two were, were very very. One was a songwriter. I can't think of her name right now, but I will before it, so this, this is over. Yeah, I yeah. think she has. It's not Jossie Armstead. She got Joe clubs Armstead. all over the nation now, doesn't she? No, she uh, actually only has one that she's trying to reopen, a, a new one she's trying to open in St. In Louis. In St. Louis? Yeah, but she had one in Memphis. She had one in Jackson, Mississippi. But uh, she only has the one now. Uh -huh. But she's trying to open. Open up. Yeah, but because the two in St. Louis mm -hmm. both closed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good you stay in touch. Oh, yeah, we see each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking at East St. Louis, mm -hmm. and you know, the city is just taking a nosedive. It came all the way from being an all-American city to a forgotten city. Yeah. And well, it's white flight. Yeah, it, it, that's true. It's, 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 it's white flight. Sure. And when they left, it looked like they took everything with them. Yeah, well, they did. All the amenities. Okay. They took but then years. I'm looking at now, what would it take to revive this city? It's and then I start looking at other that. cultures, yeah. at other cultures. Chinese came over here and, man, they start selling Chinese food. And Koreans. Koreans, they did that. You know, the Italians, they came and set their own culture up. Even the Cubans went down to Florida and got little Cuba down there. Sure. And 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 they, and they are living off their culture. When they're living off their culture, it means that people who are not of their culture would come visit them to see what their culture is like, and leave money and support them and support them. Certainly, right. So I looked at a city like Nashville. Mm -hmm. You know, one time Nashville was pretty much in bad shape, just like East St. Louis. Right. Nashville never really got any manufacturing or anything back. And one thing going for them though, the music. There you go. Yeah. They got the music going. Because I, I thought about it. 
The only natural resource that we have as black people that nobody can take away from us, that we can do well with if we control it, is our music. Because when you look at the history of our music, man, everything, what, what they started out with, what, gospel, I guess you say, was probably first? Well, it was. In fact, it came from the bottom of slave ships. Right. You know, and uh, W.C. Handy, when he heard what we consider now the blues, he was just amazed. He had no mm -hmm. idea what the, what, the, what the music was. Mm -hmm. he got gospel, then it turned to the blues. The gospel turned to blues. Certainly. Then blues turned to? Swing. Swing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I missed that one. Okay, and that was the big band era. Yeah, then hip hop. Oh, with Duke Ellington yeah. and uh, who's the other? Duke, no, Duke and Count. Count Basie. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Andy from, Kirk. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. And then from Luke, there, Luke, uh, uh, Father Times, Earl oh. Hines, Earl Hines, Earl, yeah. Earl, Earl, Earl Father Hines. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. There are so many. So it went from big band, I mean, from swing to bebop. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting an education today. Dizzy. <laughs> right, Bebop. So, so Bebop was... Who, give me an artist from Bebop. Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Dizzy Gillespie. Yeah. Yeah. King Pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 See, then we left Bebop and went to... Oh, more or less soul. Where? So, so when the rock, blues come in, blues was always there. Blues, blues is always like a cover from gospel. Okay, from gospel. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you listen to some blues or gospel songs now, unless you hear the words, uh -huh. you can tell whether it's blues or gospel. That's very true, and especially in the forties when they that's very quartets true. Quartets and so forth. Uh -huh. I used to love those quartets, <clears throat> man. So <clears throat> yeah, but uh, the blues has always been so much associated with gospel. It's hard to tell the difference. Hard to tell the difference. Yeah. So then, this, the word. so so, what was it that uh, Chuck Berry created? Chuck Berry, his, his, another genre, which is kind of a crossover from soul to country, you know. But but uh, what he played was different. That was Chuck Berry. It was different. Yeah, it was Chuck Berry. Very different. But he copied more or less the style of the country country western. Yeah. So it's kind of a cross between country western and country. <laughs> yeah, country, all country, country. But the, but the I think I think the white culture started to call it rock and roll. Well, they did. Alan Freed, uh, he was a disc jockey up in Cleveland. Then he moved to New York. Mm -hmm. uh, called him, it was the Moon Dog in Cleveland. Then he moved to New York City and uh, started rock and roll. And, uh, mm -hmm. He named it rock and roll. Well, it was rhythm and blues for us. It was oh, rhythm, rhythm and blues. So rhythm and blues and rock and roll are pretty much the same thing. Well, they were the same thing. He just. Took our culture and, oh, and, 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 and change your name. Certainly, yeah. like they always do. Always, yeah. And it took took it from us. Wow! It was rock and roll to them, and it was R and B to us, rhythm and blues. And we kept R and B for, I guess, a millennium. <laughs> yeah, certainly. And then along came rap. Rap, right? And I always, always thought that rap probably came from gospel. Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah. Joe Robinson. Yeah, because, you know, I used to hear the quartet singers, mm -hmm. and uh, that lead singer, sometimes he would he would get on a steady, boom, 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 Right, which ain't nothing but rap, but you sing songs. Right. But, but he was just hitting one or two notes. Yeah. And so I think, in my opinion, that probably was the birth of, of rap. Uh, I mean, well, about it out, about it out. Yeah, that's what they were doing. They were rapping. Yeah, yeah. The Monty Clouds of Joy, the uh, Dixie Humming Birds. Oh yeah, different uh, yeah group back at that time. And I always said rap was for people who couldn't sing. Yeah, they talk. <laughs> <laughs> they made a fortune doing <laughs> it. Actually, it was great. All you needed was a beat. That's like, all you need. That's all the rappers doing now. Yeah, I, I uh, Jim Gates and I and Doug East and I were talking one time when uh, after Sugar Hill Gang the. the uh, Rapper's Delight, the first mm -hmm. rap record. And we were saying all they were doing was what Black Disc Jockey did for years. That's yeah. all it was. They just pushed the music. That's true. They put a beat behind it. That's but, true. Uh, that's all it is. It's, a, it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's, uh, it's then it, then it warped and developed mm -hmm. gangster rap, which, uh, oh, yeah, I know about that. It was, it was pretty. So, so, so pretty let's, get back to, let's get back to uh, Nashville. Sure. Because I'm, I'm curious as to how they were able to be successful and 
use music as an industry to revive a whole community. So what was it that they did that maybe we could do? They made it accessible to people. Uh, they had venues, different venues. If you go down to Nashville right now, the whole strip, nothing but different sound lounges, different places, different ven music venues. And then we could do that. Right so they had an the entertainment place. district? Precisely. That's what it still is. Yeah. And they put and different... They had, and the Grand, Grand Ole Opry. Uh-huh. They had the Grand Ole Opry, which is all strictly country. Mm -hmm. but, but they had different clubs yes. and entertainment venues. Still. All along, is it on a particular street? Yeah, I, I forget the name of the street, but the, it's all on one street there. Or these small lounges. Is it, is it, is it Bourbon? No, it's not Bourbon Street. Bill? The Bill Street is in Memphis, which they oh. also had done. But it, it had declined also until they revitalized Bill Street. And B.B. Uh, King franchise the club. They, they had his name and other club names. But uh, we don't own any of it. So we don't own it? No, we don't own any of it. We just uh, rent it. <laughs> See, that's the... Um, they use us to market it. The, I don't know. Are you familiar with Claude Anderson, Powernomics? I don't think so. Okay. He's a professor who talked about how we as a black people, number one, we're taking advantage of mm -hmm. and how we can help ourselves. Something called vertical integration where he says you have to control your product. You have to produce it. But once you produce it, you have to control it. And I think that's what helped Motown. Mm -hmm. You know, Barry Gordon not only produced that music, Barry Gordon controlled that music. Yeah, he did. From A to Z. Enjoy that music. Yeah. Right. Publishing. Right. And the ownership. Right. Copyright. So that's the only way, where, according to Dr. Anderson, that's the only way you can pull yourself up by the, your boot trap uh, straps mm -hmm. is to have a boot. That's true. See, that's where you got to you must get the capital first. That's where you, when you're ready, you acquire the capital. That, that's the whole big thing. Yes, but then I go back to Barry Gordy again. He didn't start out with capital. No, he did not. He so how was he able to swing that? He didn't well, have any money. He had good product. <laughs> there you go. And he controlled his product. There you go. And he had good distribution. There you go. You see, but he Barry controlled didn't, it. Barry didn't explode until Gordon Prince, who was another white boy, came in and made Motown bigger than it is. Oh, it's I didn't know that city. story. You know, Gordon Prince is a, they, they used to call it gangster music, money, right? Oh. Came in and, and pumped Gary. They says they would never, never, no, allow another black man to get through like they did Barry Gordy. Hmm. <laughs> and guess what? He slipped through. So they haven't. They have not. You're talking about the, all these different rappers, Jay Z, and all these people—they were very, very lucky, but uh, they still had the backing. <coughs> so there, so you have to have some backing, you mean, you must. or somebody to at least open the door Precisely. and let you let you in yeah. before the, the, the powers notice that you're there. See, the FCC, who controls the airways, you know, the commercial airways, they deregulated the industry in 1982. Okay. Ronald Reagan deregulated oh. and he gave a chance for all these conglomerates to buy up all the local, oh. local fish. Oh, I see. The, big, the sharks came in and ate up all small fish. And then Colin Powell's son, Michael Powell, came in later years and further deregulated. Now you can own the radio stations, the TV stations, and the record companies, and the newspapers, all in one market. So they're in control. One person. One person owned five or six different papers and stations. They controlled it all. And if you're growing too fast, they buy you out. Or kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can count on that one now. I'd rather be bought out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a point there. Certainly. Wow. But uh, I was I just kind of looking at that. I'm like, man, if we had something like that in East St. Louis, it might just turn things around. There's a lot of talent out there. Oh, without a doubt. Tremendous amount of talent yeah. between here across the river and in, in the metro east area. You got just as much talent as they had in, in, in uh, Motown. If you produce the venues, and uh, see, it's very important now that the monitor is coming back, and you got to get the East St. Louis monitor, St. Louis American, St. Louis Argus, to, to promote the good side of East St. Louis instead of letting Channel 2 and Channel 4 and Channel 5 
dictate what's happening in these centers. They, okay. they, they promote nothing but the negative, if you notice. Okay. Nothing positive. Now, we have some good side, I understand. I understand they're building houses, uh, oh, lands down. Up. I'm saying, but you've got to let the people know. That's what I'm saying. Right, right. Because people across the river think East St. Louis is, is, is scary. They're afraid to come. And they'll tell you that, too. Yeah, yeah. Not, just, not just across the river. <laughs> I mean, people from all over. With Belleville. You mentioned East St. Louis, man. It's Look at like, Fairview Heights. That flag, white flag from East St. Louis built Fairview Heights. Yeah. In Belleville, you know. Yeah. So that's what we got to do. We got to get the word it, out. It's, it's kind of funny, place. but it's not funny. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a white guy in your grocery store. I had on my flyer mm -hmm. T-shirt. He looked at me. He says, East St. Louis flyer. East St. Louis flyer. He says, How come those guys from East St. Louis are so fast? Does it come from dodging bullets? <laughs> Oh, wow, really? <laughs> that wasn't funny. No, 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 no. That wasn't funny. No. No. But, uh, that's but the, that was his perception. Their mentality is. And I understand, what's it? I think some, some team they play, I think it was the first game of the year, mm -hmm. and the coach from the other side said he'd never seen guys that fast. Well, they haven't looked, that's all. No. They, <laughs> I don't know who they've been playing. I'm not saying they just haven't looked. Because East, East St. Louis wasn't playing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was they, they, they stigmatize us and they categorize us and you know they demonize us. They do. We've survived. They do. We well, survive. continue to survive. It's, we survive. Some of the early groups that I think you worked. Remember the uh, Montclairs? Oh, certainly. Okay, Phil Perry. Phil Perry. I think Phil is still David performing. Fry. David Fry. Yes, yeah, some of them I think uh, are deceased, aren't they? No, they all still they're all alive. still alive. Yeah, but uh, Dave, uh, Keith Fry. Who was the first one with him? Uh, his wife just passed, oh. and then he moved to oh, sorry, uh, right. California. I mean, Florida. And, right. Uh, but he has now dementia, slight dementia. Oh. But uh, but uh, the, the fries are Keith and David, and Phil Perry. They they still mm -hmm. all kicking off all four of them. Okay. Even El Cardo. I know Phil is still performing. Yes. Every now and then he'll come through and say hi. Well, David David's a pharmacist in St. Louis. Okay. <clears throat> David Fry. So you're doing good. Yes, yeah, really. I mean, the other group was uh, what? Bull in the Matadors. Bull in the Matadors, yeah. Yeah. And one of them on my TV show, Jim and I had a reunion recently. Oh, really? Jim Gates and I, yeah. We, you know, we did Soul Brotherhood and the Black Circle Hour. And we had Bull in the Matadors on as one of our guests about three months ago, three or four months ago. Are they still living? Oh, certainly, yeah. Wait a minute. I thought, are you sure? I thought one named Melvin, I think. He, he may have passed. I he know, may have he passed. Maybe and so. then you had Robert, <coughs> Robert, and then you had Tarvin, Anthony Tarvin joined, joined them later. Mm -hmm. And who was the other one I can't think of? Otis, Otis I think is still alive. Probably. Well, we had one of them on, two of them on, two of them on our TV mm -hmm. show recently, mm -hmm. Reunion. It's on YouTube. Yeah, you but those were the two groups I thought <coughs> should have made it. Oh yeah, they did. I don't know what happened, you know. Well, the Montclairs, Toured well, they they did very very well. You know, mm -hmm. Oliver Sane was promoting them also, and they're recording them at Archway Studio, in St. Louis, yeah. at our at our his place, Oliver's place, and uh, they they're still getting joint royalties. Oh, that's that's wonderful. Yeah, they want the jewel you're records. Doing better than what we did with yeah. ours. <laughs> they want the jewel records. Ours went over to England. We still haven't drawn any royalties <laughs> from it. We get accolades, but we don't get any money. Yeah, yeah that's strange. Well, I guess I can I can take some solace in knowing that I was with the first integrated band in the area. Yeah, wonderful. And uh, it didn't it, it didn't go anywhere, but it was a good experience. I understand you have a new CD out now. New yeah, we have a new CD out now. Uh, it's called "Ain't No Cure." The, the, the main song is "Ain't No Cure" for the co common cold. No relief from the passion for gold. Mankind better listen before it's too late. Paradise ain't built with the tools of hate. And that's the message that we're trying to get out. And with that, you know, Brother Hayes, I enjoyed you. And I hope to see you again, brother. And you will, and Thank Frank. you for being my Kappa brother. Thank you for being here. And with that, we'll say adios. Peace.